Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. Atlanta and the nation was shocked and stunned in 1979 through 1981 when 29 black children kept coming up dead in that city. Now, the police blamed a black man, Wayne Williams, for most of those murders. He was arrested and convicted for the murder of two unrelated adults. Now, no one has been charged in any of the 29 uh, children's death, but as a result of a new documentary that is coming out drawing attention to the Atlanta child murders, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms announced today that the cases will be reopened using new forensic technology and may point to a definite killer or killers. Now, in previous conversations, uh, of course, uh, the uh, police commissioner at that time, Lee Brown, he said that no doubt Wayne Williams was indeed the killer because he said as soon as Wayne Williams was convicted, all of the killings stopped. Joining us right now is the mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms. Uh, mayor, mayor, welcome to Roller Martin Unfiltered. Thank you for having me. So, um, obviously, this, this documentary that uh, Will Packer is working on uh, with the mother of one of the victims uh, is renewing the focus. Uh, he was on The Breakfast Club this morning. He uh, announced uh, that you would be doing this as well. Uh, but, but what specifically? Was it the documentary? Uh, or was it something else that precipitated you saying, we need to reopen and try to uh, use new technology to figure out uh, the killer of those 29 children? Roland, it really was a combination of things. I think um, for me, having been nine years old when these killings began, it very much was a part of my childhood and the backdrop of my childhood. But being the mayor of this city and now having four children of my own, ages eight to 16, it resonates with me in such a very different way. And certainly bringing attention, attention to the killings through Will's documentary, through some of our digital partners who we know um, have had podcasts and social media discussions on it, have certainly helped elevate the conversation. But for me, coming in as mayor of Atlanta, it is something that I always personally wonder, was there information available that I would now be privy to as mayor that I was not privy to as a lay person? And so when I had a conversation about Will, I saw uh, Curtis Walker's mother, Mrs. Leach, interviewed, and she talked about there not being any memorial and really feeling like her son had been forgotten. That part was easy because I knew that at the very least we could offer some type of lasting memorial for these children. So I offered, I announced that last week during my State of the City. But then last week when I saw that two cold cases in Alabama had been solved. I believe um, these young women were murdered in 1999 based on DNA evidence that had been put into a national database. I immediately called my police chief, Erica Shields, and asked her, had we tried to upload any evidence that we might have into the national database? Has there been a look at these cases a few years ago? But we know with having uh, public um, DNA databases now, that perhaps there's something else that we can do and some other connections that we can make. So we don't know what we still have available to be tested, but we know with DNA, all you need is one drop. And I even asked um, Chief Shields today if, and I don't know the answer to this, and she didn't know the answer offhand, is it a way that we can go back and even perhaps look at some of the children's bodies and see if we tested under their fingernails or any, would there be any evidence after they've been buried that may still be available to us? So I know that when, you know, people are buried, the bodies are cleansed, et cetera. I don't know the answer, but what I shared with Mrs. Leach today is, is it is important to me that history uh, say that we tried. So we will go back, look at all of the evidence that we have that the Georgia Bureau of Investigations has. Hopefully the FBI still has evidence, our neighboring jurisdiction, DeKalb County, and we'll see what's available. And we will certainly do everything that we can to at least provide some peace to these families, if at all possible. 
Uh, obviously, this was perplexing for then Mayor Maynard Jackson because uh, in reading the biography uh, about him, uh, it was just uh, shocking for him every day to come to the work. And when, when uh, his police commissioner would walk in, would say, don't tell me they found another one. Uh, folks were shocked. Folks were stunned. Yet in previous documentaries, Lee Brown, who was then police commissioner, he said that without a doubt, Wayne Williams was the man behind these crimes because all of the murders stopped as soon as Wayne Williams uh, was arrested. But is it, but is it for you is the issue the fact that uh, Williams was not convicted of any of these crimes and that for many of these family members, uh, it is still unsettling that although he's in prison, that they didn't get any sort of closure by, by by specifically saying he was responsible or someone else was responsible for their child's death? Well, Roland, you know that I've, I've been a lawyer for a long time and I was a judge for many years, so I do understand that there's a process and sometimes prosecutors make certain decisions as to what they will prosecute and what they won't. The, the interesting thing that I think has always um, really struck people in Atlanta and when you look at profiles of serial killers is that the murders that Wayne Williams was actually charged with were murders of much older young men. And yeah, the vast majority of these victims were children. And something that I learned that I didn't even know, uh, one body has still never been found. And there were three that were not definitively linked to Wayne Williams. So I think that people, people differ. I think the professionals differ. And I know that people in the community differ. Many people don't believe that Wayne Williams killed all of these victims. I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know is that he was not charged with, uh, with all of the murders, that there are still families out there who don't believe that he was responsible. And we owe it to these children, to the legacy of these children. And, and again, I go back to, I was nine. And right. I, I've lived through this. And to now stand as mayor of Atlanta, we owe it <sighs> to do all that we can do to say that if there are answers to be had, then we won't stop until we get those answers. And if we go through all of the evidence and there's nothing else to be found, then we can at least look these um, families in the eyes and say that we tried. But we will have a memorial in this city and find the appropriate way to honor these um, families and these children and to hear Mrs. Leach say that she finally feels heard for me mm -hmm. was extremely fulfilling. And I'm, I'm just grateful that we can at least provide that comfort to her. It is stunning that after all of these years, uh, there is no, no memorial in Atlanta uh, for these 29 children. Uh, of course, in 1979, when this started, uh, I was 11 years old. And I can tell you, it reverberated in black communities all across this country. Uh, black parents uh, were constantly checking on their children because of what was happening in Atlanta, because there was fear that it could somehow spread to other, other cities as well. Uh, and so... What's your timeline for this memorial in terms of um, when it will um, uh, commence and be completed? We are getting to work on that immediately, and Will Packer has already agreed to do whatever he can do to help us facilitate that. But most importantly, we want input from the families as to what mm -hmm. they would think would be appropriate. And, you know, if you can imagine this today, I remember <laughs> Roland... Um, my grandmother and my aunt calling from Chicago, begging my mother to send me to Chicago to live because they were killing black children in Atlanta. And it is something, um, I think what's really struck me is how emotional it's made me 40 mm -hmm. years later, because what I realized is that I process all of this as a child living through it. And for us in Atlanta, our biggest fears came true. There was a boogeyman in our lives, but processing it and looking at it from the lens of a mother with children of this age, I cannot begin to imagine what that pain must be. So I think a memorial is the very least that we can do and we should have done many, many years ago. All right. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much.
Thank you for having me. All right, folks, back to our Bold Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Calling all HBCU alumni, students, and leaders in the Ford Motor Company HBCU Mobility Challenge and win $25,000 for your school. Building on their long-term support of HBCUs, Ford is looking to improve mobility in HBCU communities through innovative solutions. The winning program will receive a grant up to $25,000 to implement their proposal. The deadline is near March 31st, 2019. Go to fgb.life, fgb.life for more information and to apply. Ford goes further in our community, and we certainly thank them for being a partner here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.